In the head-to-head -head lectures, I show you pictures from two different patients with two different diseases that look somewhat alike. Your job is to pause the video when I'm showing the pictures and see if you can figure out what the two diseases are. Here are two different patients with axial T1 weighted images that show a hyperintense lesion in the petrous apex. Here's where you should pause the video and see if you can figure out what each of these lesions are. They are two different diseases. Maybe some other sequences would help. Here is a fat suppressed post contrast image on those same two patients. You want to pause it again and see if this helps you narrow down your differentials. Now, what do you think? All right, if that wasn't enough, I'll give you one more clue, the CT. Here are CT images on these same patients. Does that help you with your differential? Pause it again if you want to look at this in more detail. Okay, let's go over these cases. They really do look a lot alike. There's bright T1 signal in the medial petrous apex on an unenhanced T1 weighted image. This patient has asymmetric pneumatization of the petrous apex, and this patient has a cholesterol granuloma. So how do we tell them apart? Well, the first thing to notice is that there's no change in the contour of the petrous apex in this patient. The petrous apex still has a normal configuration. This is just normal marrow fat that happens to be present in the petrous apex. On the other side, is an air cell, and it's that asymmetry between normal marrow and a normal air cell that catches our eye in asymmetric pneumatization of the petrous apex. On this patient, this is an expansile object. Look how it remodels the contour of the petrous apex. It's also bright in T1, and that's characteristic of a cholesterol granuloma. But we can use other sequences to confirm our suspicions. Once we suppress fat, this is really important. The only thing that goes away when you suppress fat is fat. So when we do a fat suppressed T1 weighted image, whether or not it has contrast as this one does, the fact that that bright signal disappears indicates that we're dealing with fat. And the fat containing object that we encounter in the petrous apex is the normal marrow fat. So that really narrows down this, the possibilities in this patient. In this patient, the fat suppression does nothing for the bright signal in the cholesterol granuloma. That's because it's not made of fat, it's, it's made of blood degradation products, and those are intrinsically bright on T1. In patients with asymmetric pneumatization of the petrous apex, the CT is a complete giveaway. This is normal bone marrow, this is normal air cells, this asymmetry is clear when you see it on CT. It's only confusing when you're looking at a T1 weighted MR image when this asymmetry really pops out at you. So this is asymmetric pneumatization. Look at on this side. Here, there is loss of the normal bone in the medial petrous apex. Look how the internal carotid artery has been displaced compared to its counterpart. This is an expansile mass thinning the bone to, the degree, to a degree of imperceptibility and displacing surrounding soft tissue structures. This is really a huge mucosal, but because it's got blood degradation products in it, it's going to be bright on T1 weighted imaging, and that's what we call a cholesterol granuloma.